In uh, 2004, Cecilia Ahern wrote her first novel at only the age of 21. It became an international bestseller, was adopted into a motion picture soon after. In the eight years that have passed since then, it's fair to say she's one of our most successful writers, has published several novels, along with writing for TV and the stage, joins us now in the studio to for her latest book, 100 Names. Cecilia, good morning. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. Uh, four months old, is it, at this stage? He's three months. He's only three yeah, months. Yeah, 12 weeks. 12 weeks exactly, yes. Right, and he's starting to knock the socks off you a little bit. He really is. <laughs> he doesn't want to um, sleep. He's, he was all full of chat. He wasn't particularly crying, but he was just all talking to me and smiling. Yeah. So it's really hard to ignore that if we're Did he not read the contract? Did you not explain I know, to him? I know. I don't think he signed it properly. Honest <laughs> to God. Um, I was good because I was reading about you. Um, your work rate has been unbelievable, and having children doesn't yeah. seem to have knocked you off your stroke at all. Well, I mean, writing this book was definitely the most stress-filled year I've had because um, I didn't begin it until February, and it was due for June. The baby was due for July, and I was like a maniac this year. I Two said, deadlines I, within four weeks of yeah, each other, one of which is immovable. Yeah, exactly, and that's what was so stressful. It was like if I don't if I don't write this book, it just won't be written. That's it. Um, I you know I can't do it after the baby's born. I needed a break, so but I did it and. Um, I don't and know, you're very happy with it, aren't I'm you? I'm delighted with it. I think sometimes the more pressure you're under, yeah. I know, the more you can deliver. Maybe. When I was reading about the pressure, I was thinking, why would you bother putting yourself under pressure? Because you, yeah. you've, you've written so many books in such a short period of time. There are so many different irons in the fire that are successful. But it's, called, it's kind of self-created pressure in a way, it felt, that you could, you could at any point go, oh, I you. don't know why. I mean, I, I just seem to like to challenge myself. Even if I take a break, I just look for something new, like a new challenge. Um, if it's, you know, doing TV or writing a different kind of book, or I re even though I hate challenges, <laughs> I don't know why I put myself up against it all the time. I, I just, I don't know, I think I, I need to make my life more exciting or something. But, um, but and also the fact that I love what I do. I mean, that's right. probably the overriding. Do, do you always love what you do? Because I always find with writers, is there not that moment where you get up and it's a blank page? Oh, absolutely, yeah. But I think it's like anything, you kind of remember the good bits more than the bad. Um, like when your kids grow older, you forget what it's like to have those sleepless nights until you, you have them again. Um, but no, mostly just adore what I do. And then there are days when just nothing will happen. I can't even string a sen sentence together. Um, so I, what I do is if I can't remember a word, I'll put X. So sometimes I look at the page and I just see X, really? X, X, the X, the X. Yeah, if, you know, because you can spend so long trying find to find a word that you lose your train of thought and you can't remember where you were going. So I just put X. I'll go back to that one. Um, but on really bad day, it's just X, 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 X. <laughs> <laughs> that one soon. So tell me about this one. What's the story in this one? 100 Names. It's, um, my main character is a journalist and she has made a really massive professional mistake. Um, she's inaccurately reported a story and as a result loses her, loses her job and the TV show she's reporting for. People would see echoes immediately of the RTE libel case there. Yeah, and that kind of did inspire her, the back, the back story. Um, it's definitely not even remotely similar. Okay. Like I don't know those people and I don't know how, you know, I don't know the kind of details of that case so I definitely have to say that but um, the idea that she you know inaccurately reported the story I thought that was the conflict I wanted my journalist to find herself in so she goes to her mentor her friend her editor of the magazine she works for and asks for some advice really she's trying to redeem herself she's trying to look for inspiration and she says what story have you always wanted to write but never had the opportunity to write and her editor tells her to go to her office retrieve this idea which is in a sealed envelope and bring it back and she'll discuss it with her but by the time she gets back to her she's passed away she never learns what the actual story is about but it falls upon her to write this story um, and all it is is a list of 100 names and she has no idea how they're linked who the people are how to meet them so she has a, a deadline of two weeks to try and write the story for as a tribute to her best friend and mentor and she's under major pressure from all sides, from all angles, trying to clear her name, um, but also find what the story is. Right. So it, it, once again, I find always your premise is always intriguing, always, yeah, you. you know, a, a letter falls through the letterbox from somebody who's dead. It's it, yeah, amazing, yeah, like, well, yeah. what if. Um, where did you get this idea from? Um, actually, I can actually tell you where I got this oh, idea, good. which I usually can't. <laughs> it's usually, I don't know, it's daydreaming. Um, but I was kind of half watching TV and it was the MTV Awards are on and I heard an actress talking about her new movie and I thought she said 100 names so I stopped what I was doing looked up and thought oh my god I love that title what's it about my mind started imagining and, and 
immediately came up with the story, you know, as I was waiting to hear what it was about, and realised it was the Hunger Games, and I had completely misheard. Right. So I thought she said 100 names, it was the Hunger Games. So as soon as I heard that it was nothing remotely close to what I thought it was, I thought, yes, that's my Here idea. Wow. So, um, yeah, really unusual way to come up with it, but that's that's how it happened. And when you sit, I'm, I'm fascinated to know, when you sit down um, to write, do, do, have you sketched out how this is going to end, or are you heading into Yeah, I usually know the end. The, the problem with this is that it was too big of an idea. I thought, there's no way that I can have somebody meet a hundred people. You can't read about that. I can't create that many characters. Nobody's going to want to read that many characters. So I kind of kept putting it, you know, away and not thinking about it. Um, I kept returning to my book of ideas where I have lots of other I ideas. Another um, fascinating insight. You have a book of ideas. I do. Tell me more. Whenever I come up with an idea or a character, I just put it in my little book and 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 I usually put it there when it's not fully developed yet. You know, it's kind of a seed of an idea and, right. and it takes about a couple of years for it to grow. So ideas have been in there for the last 10 years. Um, but nothing was was coming through to me as something that I wanted to write as a novel and finally I had that moment where I thought I'm going to take six of these ideas and use them as part of my 100 names and wow. they'll be the characters that I that I examined. That so I there are little ideas in that book that you know theoretically are going to be signed up for one book yeah. But can find themselves playing for a completely different book. Yeah, exactly. It was unusual. <laughs> Whether I mean, they like it or not. Well, and what was so unusual about it, it, it was like I was getting different characters from different books and they were all kind of finally meeting each other and yeah. that was just really bizarre. I mean, it would be like taking the main character from my other nine books and finally having a book just about them. Yeah, because, which um, would be intriguing as well. Exactly, yeah, that's another one. Um, but I felt like that's what I was doing in this novel, just taking people that I've been coming up with ten years ago yeah. and finally having them meet someone I, I created last year. So... Um, I really great. enjoyed it. I really it enjoyed sounds it. great. I saw one description of your writing, um, which I, I thought was very intriguing: speculative literature. Would oh, you I agree love that. that? Yeah, well, yeah, because I always say, "What if this happens?" That's what yeah. if. Uh, we have a what if moment for you, don't we? You ready? See, you might need to put your headphones on now okay. for a second. It's just good to shock your guests every now and again. Here's okay. a what if moment. Actually, I have to say, your headphones yeah, are off. Headphones are off. I apologize. Why is you in a band? I didn't know about this. I'm yesterday. doing the oohs and the ahs in the background. <laughs> Shima? Shima? Shima. 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 As in Shima, yeah. Right. Yeah, that was for the Euro song. How serious a band was that? Not very. <laughs> <laughs> serious enough to go on national television. Um, we were put together, especially for the Euro were you song. Put together? Yeah. Who put you together? Um, well, Louis Walsh was kind of involved, he was helping out. Um, but, you know, and individually, all those people were so talented, um, but together we were not. <laughs> right. That can happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and they hate me every time I do something and that's played. Oh, they just... Well... <laughs> I get in trouble. <laughs> Once you stand up on a stage uh, and you start singing songs like that and it's being recorded, you have Which to actually expect... was cool because we got to perform that with Who's Eddie, who wrote the song. And I, they were very good Yeah, bands. fantastic. So um, I definitely don't want to take away their writing yeah. skills, but we definitely didn't do them any just as I They're a genuinely talented. They are Who's excellent. Eddie. They could come yeah. into the studio now and perform a cappella. Oh, yeah. Pretty much any song. They're great singers. They're real showbiz people, really. They are, them. but they couldn't rescue us. No. <laughs> they could do were anything. Were you devastated could... when Shimmer didn't quite make it? No, I think it was the making of me. <laughs> but no, do you know what was fun? We got a record deal and we recorded in um, Pete Waterman Studios. And wow. Yeah, I mean, it was a one-off thing, but, you know, everyone was behind us trying to help out and it then just failed miserably. <laughs> you weren't heartbroken, you weren't crying at home. Um, no, no. I think we were pretty happy to be released. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, a brush with, with, you know, misery really is, is how it came Do you know, when that was over, that made me concentrate on college. I thought that was the last thing I, I wanted to really try. Right. So, um, you know, if I hadn't failed at that, I would... God you got the failure in early. I know, it's you important. Know. Oh, I've had plenty of them. <laughs> yeah. um, speaking of, of uh, fame and fortune, are you watching Nicky at all? I Strictly? am. I'm glued to it. What do you make of it? I think he's fantastic. I think those horrible judges are being so cruel to him. <laughs> They're being so mean. My daughter was watching it with me. She said, why is Nicky sad? She, she could just see his Why face. is he not able to do it? He is. He's not doing a great thing, Oh, is I he? think he's fantastic. I, I, I was, think he when missed... I saw him going in, I was very optimistic for yeah. him. But he is struggling. I didn't think he would struggle. In on Saturday night, he missed the beat, the count. He was supposed to count it in, but the audience were... They did it over the audience clapping, so he missed it. So he missed the whole start of the routine, which was why right. that didn't work out. Yeah. So, um, 
but I think they've got the quick step this week. Good so look he's at really looking uh, really My, my daughter will be watching him this week. But so you know what I've She's named a very him. harsh judge. <laughs> things, <so. laughs> yes. He has a nickname. He's Glitter Balls. That's my nickname <laughs> for him. So um, I'm uh, trying to get Glitter Balls to win. It sounds like an eye between him and David Beckham could be very it, interesting. Well, that's it. That's yeah, where I got it. Balls and Glitter Balls together. Um, we mentioned that you have three films in production. Is this for Yeah, real? well, there's. Um, I've got one TV show with uh, German... TV network ZDF that's filming in Ireland in March and April, which is really exciting. Um, but then the gift is the next film to go. It, um, hopefully, it will be filmed next year. Wow! Yeah, if a lot I'm going on. Will you take a break now with, with the three month old? I have to go back to work in January. To You're not giving work. yourself much of a break at all, are you? Because no. you took quite a break from the first. I took one, didn't a year you? with Robin. Yeah, and. Um, well, I just can't really do that every time, so I've <laughs> tried to take as much You're time only as possible. thirty-one. You can take as many breaks as you yeah, want. I don't know. Really? Thank you. <laughs> yes, remember. Can you, you write a note to my publisher? I will. Yeah, I'll Thank do a note. It's been very harsh, very harsh, Cecilia. And she take more breaks if she wants to. Cecilia, thanks very much for coming. It's an absolute pleasure talking Thank to you as you. always. You make an awful lot of people feel very inadequate at that work rate. No, not after hearing that song. I'm sure a lot of people feel better about their achievements. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You never know. Cecilia, thanks very Thank much for coming in. Merry